Hello everybody, this is Isar and I have received a couple of questions from a couple of friends in YouTube about uh, the specs on the Gibson 2015, right? And I'm going to try to answer these questions with a short video. Again, I'm going to tell you what I have done. This does not mean that is what you have to do. So first, let's take a look to the Gibson specs. Uh, here, I have put the not action, so the action of the, th of the first fret. And you will see why this is especially important in this model. And here it is in inches, right? And here in millimeters. The string height, always measured at the 12th fret, right? 564 of an inch for the sixth string and 364 of an inch for the first string. Right? And the relief, which is 12,000 of an inch, right? Kind of 0 0.3 millimeters. Okay, this is, those are the, the Gibson specs, right? So you may want to take a note huh? and you will have them always with you there. So now, why should things be different with this guitar? Well, they should not. Hmm? But usually in guitars with zero fret, right? And this guitar has a zero fret, a brass nut with a zero fret. Hmm? Usually what happens is that you are allowed to go a little bit lower in action, right? And this is what I have done in specs. Hmm? Uh, so what I'm gonna share with you are the specs that I have this guitar set up to, right? This does not mean that those would be good specs for you, but maybe eh, my good friend Simon can find a little bit of an answer to his question. Now, if you recall, hmm, the action at the first fret hmm, that comes, you know, with Gibson specs is 0 0.030 inches, which is 0 0.76 millimeters, right? And at the first string, right, is 0 0.015 inches, which is 0 0.38 millimeters, right? Those are the Gibson specs. Now, with this nut, eh, you are allowed to basically modify the height of the nut, right? using a hex key that basically fits here in the two screw holes, right? Now, the specs that I have set this guitar up to uh, uh, at the first fret, the action of the first fret are 0 0.5 millimeters. Look, my filler gauge of 0 0.5 just just kind of fits without pushing the string but fits very tight eh? so i would basically recommend that if you want to go to this uh, spec you take the nut to this height right and you use a 0 0.5 millimeters filler gauge that has to be very tight against the string, does not push the string up, but fits very, very tight, 0 0.5 millimeters, okay? And at the first string, I have one to 0 0.3 millimeters. So this is my 0 0.3 millimeters filler gauge and exactly slips there, you know, it kind of fits tight, as tight as with the sixth string with 0 0.3 millimeters you can do the conversion to inches later right how did i do that hmm? well i adjusted the screws with the hex key that are at the nut hmm? with this hex key it's a very thin hex key fits perfectly in the screw hole at the nut and i adjusted the height of the nut until i got that string height at the first fret 0 0.5 millimeters at the sixth string 0 0.3 millimeters at the first string which is considerably lower than the gibson specs now relief for the relief i have used 11,000 of an inch not 12,000 of an inch which is uh, my filler gauge of 0 
millimeters. So capo first fret, right, as always. Eh? Pressing where the fretboard meets the body, and then seventh and ninth fret. And as you see, the 0 0.25 goes somehow a little bit tight at the seventh fret. Very good at the sorry, very good at the seventh fret. And a little bit tighter at the ninth fret, but does not take the string up, right? Does not push the string up, right? So that's the relief that I have used, eleven thousandths of an inch. So now string height, right? At the twelfth fret, I went more or less with PRS specs, right? Around one sixteenth of an inch, which is slightly above 1.5 millimeters at the sixth string right and at the first string i went even lower a little bit lower i went slightly above one millimeter right? now the tailpiece and the tunematic okay this is one of my favorite topics when it comes to guitars the, there are a lot of nonsense said about the tailpiece and well, and sincerely speaking, I'm not here to teach anybody, but I am just answering questions from friends. So I would like my friends to be properly advised. The first thing is that there are people saying that the tailpiece should be perfectly attached to the body. There should not be practically any space between the tailpiece and the body because then this will affect the tone of your guitar. Sincerely speaking, this is not true dot I mean period not true okay the tunomatic hmm, would be adjusted to give you the action that you want I have already told you what action I have in this guitar the tunomatic is adjusted with this hex key right? like this so once you get the action that you want hmm, that I have already shared with you hmm, you need to adjust the height of the tailpiece, right? And the only parameter that you should use to adjust the height of your tailpiece is that the strings should not be in contact with the tunomatic. The only point of contact of the strings should be the saddle. If you have your strings in touch with the tunomatic, you need to raise the height of the tailpiece and nothing happens guys no problem at all this is eh, why the tailpiece has two knobs to adjust the height hmm? now uh, if you have your strings in touch with the tunomatic what is going to happen is that they are going to break very easily hmm? if your if your guitar is breaking a lot of strings especially in the high strings right is because probably the tunomatic is in touch with the string, not only in the saddle, but here at the edge, right? Then what you need to do is to raise the height of the tailpiece in order to create a space between the strings and the tunomatic, or vice versa. If you have a lot of space, you can lower the tailpiece, right? With these knobs. Hmm? Now, I use a very simple trick. Hmm? I use a very small piece of paper and I try to sneak the paper, you know, uh, between the, the string and the tunomatic. And if the paper goes, mm, I don't need more space. Mm. And as you see here, the paper goes, mm, the paper slips into the, the space between the tailpiece and the tunomatic in all the strings. Mm. In some of them better and in some of them a little bit tighter. Eh? Usually the two on the extremes, the high and the low E, eh? are tighter because the, uh, the, the tailpiece has an A, uh, it is not perfectly linear. Eh? You look to the strings, it has a little bit of a radius. Eh? And this is, this is how I set up my Gibson uh, 2015. Let me say a couple of things about the about the, the the brass nut but before we talk about the adjustable brass nut let me remind you that in this guitar you would adjust the intonation with a hex key eh? not with a screwdriver and you would use the same hex key you've been using 
for setting up the height of the strings, right? Now, this is, of course, my personal opinion. I really consider a pity that Gibson has not continued with the brass nut. It is a fantastic device. It allows you to go lower in action. The guitar plays like butter. It's fantastic. And I have several Gibsons. And I know what I mean. I have four. And one is a very, very old one, by the way. So, uh, Sincerely speaking, from here I know that it does not make any difference, but from here I would like to send a shout to everybody who has criticized these guitars, the 2015 line, right? Guys, in my honest opinion, you're wrong. Those are excellent guitars, at least the one I have, the standard, is a fantastic machine, the, the coil speed the coil tapping uh, is fantastic uh, all the sound options that you can get right all the tone options and on top of that sincerely speaking i love the brass nut i really do mm. and this has been all for today uh, especially dedicated to my good friend simon simon i hope that this has been of any use to you take care and see you very soon bye